keeping you informed. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burby's 99.5 FM. Kite Radio. Radio. Good evening and welcome to this evening's newscast right here on Kaiju Radio. I am Kevin Smith. Before we get to the news in detail, let's get to the front page comment of today's Kaiju News. In excess of 100 billion American dollars of our oil wealth were given away by the PPPC leaders, with the coalition and civil society silently consenting. This was on the Kanji oil block alone. To cheat, and insult us further, Guyana must pay the owners of Mid-Atlantic, who handed government a bill without detailed information, for 100 million Guyana dollars in pre-contract costs related to that same oil block. They gave away the Kanji oil block for free, and then the hustlers of Mid-Atlantic turned around and handed this ludicrous bill without explanation. Separately, we have asked for months on our front page. Who owns the Kanji and Kaitro oil blocks? Two men whose names appeared on incorporation documents. The first said he cannot recall, while the other stated that his hearing is not like before. Meanwhile, President Irfan Ali and Vice President Bharat Jagdio and the coalition leaders Joseph Harmon and Rafael Trotman are extremely silent. More and more, a guy in his oil is like a graveyard. Frightening silence and holes dug by government and opposition leaders to bury all of us. And now for the news in detail, it is unclear whether the first recipient of the Kanji oil block, Mid-Atlantic Oil and Gas, ever intended to do the work it committed to doing under the agreement with the government. This is evidenced by the fact that the company sold away shares in the block. A mere, six, a mere six weeks away after received, receiving it. Sorry, The Natural Resource Governance Institute has noted the quick flipping of blocks without having substantial work as a major red flag of inquiry into possible corruption. The block is currently split between Total, ExxonMobil, Mid-Atlantic and JHI Associates. In other news, as oil-producing nations like Guyana embark on efforts to build the capacity of effective manage, to effectively manage its petroleum sector, particularly in the award of oil blocks, there are a few critical lessons it should pay attention to if it intends to not repeat the mistakes made by others. In this regard, expert on oil sector corruption, Alexandra Gillies, opined that the massive giveaway of the gas blocks offshore Senegal holds crucial lessons for oil-producing nations. Gillies said that nations should always increase scrutiny, followed by an immediate investigation whenever this red flag is noticed. Gillies said that it is a red flag that should never be ignored. And moving on, the Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Nigel Daram Lal, has halted a procurement order for portrait posters. The transaction has caused widespread concerns. The minister's decision came after we reported that he had instructed his staff to hire a company that was discovered to be founded by his son. In a statement to the press yesterday, Daram Lal was keen to indicate that he gave no instruction to his staff to use any particular company to print 80 posters, which attracted the price of $80,000. It was opposition MP Ganesh Mari Paul who on Saturday released documents highlighting the damning revelations. Minister Daram Lal has since refuted all of the claims. Meanwhile, it is now being confirmed that Permanent Secretary Emil McGarrell was on Friday sacked from his post in the ministry. Let's tell you now that labelled as a high-profile convict who cheated death on many occasions, a former Buxton gang member, 36-year-old Ryan Joseph, was yesterday shot by cops during his arrest for multiple armed robberies and larceny. Joseph was shot sometime around 11 hours inside his James Street Alboystown home. Commander of Police Division 4A, 
Simon McBean said that Joseph was wanted for a number of robberies he allegedly committed in the Georgetown area. Not only was he considered a high-profile criminal, but is deemed as the convict who repeatedly escapes death. Apart from his escapades, prison officers recalled him called him disgusting and recalled staring at the video recorded in the Lusignan prison of him dancing on a table in his underwear. In other news, the chairperson for the PNCR and former health minister Valda Lawrence today failed to present herself at the Criminal Investigation Department headquarters at Ivleri in Georgetown as agreed on by the Ghana Police Force and her attorney, Nigel Hughes. Lawrence was scheduled to report at CID at 10 hours today in relation to the investigation into electoral fraud committed during the March 2nd elections. And moving on, the GCAM Chief Elections Officer Keith Lewinfield was yesterday slapped with six additional electoral fraud charges in relation to the investigation by the Ghana Police Force into the March 2nd elections. Lewinfield today reported to the Criminal Investigation Department at 12 hours with one of his attorneys, Nigel Hughes, when the new charges were put to him and he was arrested and escorted to the Georgetown Magistrates Courts. Six charges were read to Lewin Field, three counts of misconduct in public office, and three counts of forgery. The prosecutor made objections to bail to being granted to, def to the defendant. However, the magistrate granted bail in the sum of $50,000 on each charge, a total of $300,000, and the matter was adjourned to October 23, 2020. And moving on, yesterday the Ministry of Health received 26, that should be today, the Ministry of Health received 26 ventilators. At a handing over ceremony at the Ministry's Kingston Georgetown bond, it was revealed that 21 of the ventilators were donated by the Indian government and five were donated by the Pan American Health Organization, all of which came up to a total of 122 million Guyana dollars. And finally, let's tell you that police patrol ranks today picked up a man who was apparently posing with an unlicensed handgun on Sussex Street in Charlestown, Georgetown. According to a police report, the man identified as a security guard of Dr. Miller Street Triumph, East Coast Amarara, was seen around one hour by the ranks, standing with another man, aged 20, in the vicinity of Humphrey Bakery. The officers were driving through the area when they saw the security guard with a firearm in his right hand. The ranks stopped their vehicle, exited and approached the man, and they took away the weapon. Upon observing the weapons, cops noted that it was a Beretta pistol containing four 9mm bullets. It was also detailed at the report that the cops asked the security guard if he was a licensed firearm holder, but he said no. The security guard was then arrested, and the other male who was standing next to him was taken into custody as well. And that brings us to the end of this evening's newscast. I am Kevin Smith. Thank you for listening. Want value for your advertising dollar? Then place your ads on Kaicho Radio's newscasts. Streamed live on six different mediums, reaching hundreds of thousands. Advertise today and watch your dollar grow. Call us on 225-8465 or 226-8210 today. Are you looking for a platform to share your